Hey there internets, I'm Michael and I'm going to teach you how to play Tyrants of the Underdark, a Dungeon and Dragons game by Gale Force 9. Start setting up the game by placing the game board in the middle of the table. For a two player game you'll only use the centre section of the board, for a four player game you'll use all three sections and for a three player game you'll choose one of the side sections with which to use. You'll then place these white troops on all the spaces that have the crossed swords logo. So once this is then done you'll need to place the control tokens for all these circle sites out and you'll just place those on each of the sites. The game comes with four market decks. You've got the Drow, Dragons, Elemental and then Demons. You'll only use two of these in each game and it's recommended that you use the Drow and Dragon decks for the first game so you'll shuffle these together. Then place them on the market board revealing six as your market. You'll then need to place the victory point tokens in the victory point space, the house guards on the house guard space, and the priestesses of Loth on their space. The insane outcast cards are only used with the demons deck, so for now you can just leave these in the box. Each player will then pick one of the drow houses to be and take the player board in a circle and 40 troops and five spies of that colour. You'll also give each player three soldier cards and seven of the noble cards. They'll shuffle these together to be their starting deck, then draw five cards as their starting hand. Randomly determine who's going to take the first turn and give them the first player marker. Next, starting with your first player and going in clockwards order, each player will choose one of these black sites and place a troop in it. That's the game all set up and you're ready to play. The aim of the game is to end the game with the most victory points and there are lots of different ways to get victory points that won't really make a lot of sense yet till I've told you how to play. So I'll tell you all about the end game scoring at the end of the video. But what I will say is that you will get points for controlling areas, for having cards in your deck and also during the course of the game you'll be able to gain points. Starting with the first player and going in clockwise order each player will take turns made up of four phases. First you have your main phase where the bulk of the play will happen and I'll come back to this in a moment. Then you gain victory points for any site control markers that you have total control over as stated on the token and I'll talk about these when I talk about control. Then you discard any cards that you've played or have left in hand. Finally you draw a new hand of five cards. So, going back to our main actions, the main thing that you can do is play cards from your hand to immediately gain the effect. So, the starting cards that you have will do one of two things. One will give you one power into your resource pool, and the other one will give you one influence into your resource pool. And I'll talk more about the more complex card effects once I've gone through the basics of a turn. You can spend one power from your resource pool to deploy a troop where you have a presence. First, let's define when you have presence. You have presence on any site where you have either a troop or a spy. Spies can only go on sites. There are also these paths. Only troops can go on paths. So at the moment, the only troop I have out is this one here. That means I have presence in this site here, but I also have a presence in all adjacent locations. So I have a presence to this white troop here, their space, and to here and here on these paths. I do not have presence anywhere else on the board. I could go here and then I would have presence to this site here, and then I could go here and I'd have presence to these two sites here as well as where I already am. So placing a troop, troops will always go in circles. You can only place a troop where you have presence and the circle is empty. So I cannot place a troop here even though I have presence there. Free power to assassinate a troop where you have a presence, which means that you remove 
a troop from the board where you have presence. So at the moment, the only one I could assassinate is this white troop here. Anything that refers to a white troop, it is only these. Anything that refers to a player troop, it's any troop other than the white ones. When you assassinate it, it goes into your trophy hall and is worth a victory point at the end of the game. Free power to return a spy where you have a presence. This does require you to have presence where the spy you wish to return is, and you'll simply remove it from the board and return it to that player's barracks. Also, you can use influence to recruit cards. In the top right here is how many influence it costs to recruit the card. Then in the white box is the effect of the card, and down here is the victory points that the card will give you. In the rectangle is how many you get for it being in your deck, and in the circle is how many you get for it being promoted to your inner circle. Whenever a card is recruited from the market, you will immediately draw a new card to fill the space. And it is possible to recruit multiple cards in the same turn, even from the same space. So then other effects you might get from playing cards. You'll have ones like this where you have a choice of the effect you get split by bullet points. If it says choose one, you'll have to pick which one to do. So here we have the option to place a spy. To place a spy, you'll simply take it from your barracks and place it onto a site next to the name. Spies do not take up locations where the troops go. Also, a spy does not have to be placed where you have presence. This is one of the few exceptions to the rule that everything you can do is only where you have presence unless the card states otherwise. The other option here is to return one of your own spies. Returning your spy, you would simply place it back in your barracks. It then has this arrow here. What this means is that if you do the first part, you then get the second part, which in this case is to supplant a troop. Supplanting a troop means that you perform a assassination and then an immediate deploy. So if I was supplanting this white troop here, I would remove the white troop and add it to my trophy hall and then deploy one of my blue troops into the space made. Some cards will allow you to promote other cards. When a card is promoted, you'll place it onto your inner circle here. It is no longer worth victory points from the rectangle, but will instead get you victory points at the end of the game for the number in the circle. Some, like this white dragon here, will allow you to gain victory points when you play the card. How many victory points you gain and the conditions of those victory points will be stated on the card. Some cards, such as this cleric here, will allow you to move an enemy troop. So, as I have a presence here, I could move this enemy troop to any space that is empty on the board. Where I'm moving it from, I have to have presence. But where I'm moving it to, I don't. So I could move it to one of these spaces down here, which isn't going to help get any control of a site. Another ability a card might grant is to devour a card. Whenever a card is devoured, you will place it into the devoured cards section of the market board. Now let's talk about controlling sites, partly for gaining XP, but also for endgame scoring. The numbers on the sites represent how many victory points you'll get at the end of the game for having control of a territory. They have no effect during the game. The tokens on the round sites do have an in-game effect. When you have control of one of these sites, you will take the control token. If you only have control, you get the control side, which is always one influence. You'll get this every turn that you have control of that territory. The other side is for total control, and this will then give you the victory points stated on the token. So at the moment, I have control of this center site here because I have more of my color than there are of any other color. So although out of the total of four, I only have half, I still have control. 
I don't, however, have total control. Total control is when you are the only colour at that site. And if my opponent had placed a spy at that site, that would stop me having total control, as would placing a troop. Where we have the same number of troops, that means no one has control. You do not need to fill all the spaces in order to have total control. And you continue taking turns like this in clockwise order until the end of the game. The end of the game can be triggered in one of two ways. Either a player places the last of his troops, or the market deck runs out of cards. At which point you will finish the round, playing up to your first player. At this point it is then the end of the game and you'll do the end of game scoring. And the first thing you'll score is for control of territories. So each territory you control, you'll get victory points equal to the number. So I'd get three for this territory here that I have control of. This territory no one has control of. The red player would get two here, three here. No one has control of this because white does, but they do not score. And no one has control here. Then you score for total control. Each site you have total control of gives you an extra two points. So in this case, the only person with any total control is red, who would gain an extra two points for this site and two points for this site. You then get one point for each troop in your trophy horn. It doesn't matter if it's a white troop or a player troop. Next, you'll take your deck and your discard piles and any cards in hand and you will add up the number in the rectangle. This is how many victory points you get for the cards in your deck. Once this is done, you'll then do the same for your inner circle, except for you're taking the number in the circle rather than the rectangle. The final victory points you get are for any victory point tokens you have collected during the game. Any site control markers are worth nothing at this stage. Whoever has the most victory points has won. And that is how you play Tyrants of the Underdark by Gale Force 9. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.